Free to play games, love them or hate them, there are some that might be worth checking out if you don't want to spend any money. Here are 10 new free to play games coming in fresh for 2022. Let's get started off with number 10 and talk the cycle. Frontier. This is an upcoming FPS player versus player versus enemy style game. In it, players are taking the role of essentially a prospector and you're traveling to this planet that has been abandoned because of hostile alien wildlife and deadly storms. So your goal is to drop down onto the planet and seek out resources and treasure. But of course, you're gonna have to explore, loot and fight. Not only against the wildlife and harshness out there, but also other players and characters that are also trying to get to the loot. The idea in the loop is really like you get enough loot and then you run an escape back to your ship to then cash in on that loot to upgrade everything for your next journey. Interesting concept. It's clearly taking and tweaking a bunch of different concepts from other games and mashing them together. And interestingly enough, it's being published and developed by Jaeger, the folks behind Spec Ops, The Line and the underrated Dreadnought. Because of their pedigree, uh, we just kind of like the games they make, even if they don't make many. Uh, we're definitely going to keep an eye on this one. Next over at number nine, we have Spine. This is an action heavy cyberpunky style game in a dystopian world where two factions are fighting for control, uh, but they're all powered by this spine technology. This tech that's like implanted literally into people's spines to give them lightning fast reflexes. You're going to be able to choose a character in a roster of characters that all have their own different varieties in terms of like spine abilities and their own fighting styles. That's roughly going to be a three versus three type of game. And it looks to be pretty interesting, especially because it's releasing on all platforms. There's melee combat, there's ranged combat, there's some more cinematic style camera angles. And we're just hoping that it's as cool as it looks. You know, you can't trust trailers and stuff on their own, but if it's free anyway, and the bar to entry is low, we might end up trying this one. Next over at number eight, we have Gangstar New York. Now this is both an iOS and Android and PC game. It's gonna be available on Steam and it's from Gameloft. Now Gameloft, of course, is famous now for having big budget over the top mobile games that kind of seem very derivative of console games, like they have their own generic Call of Duty, multiple Grand Theft Auto clones, but Gangstar New York looks to really kind of step up things a bit because, I mean, just look at it on screen here. Uh, people have been able to get access to an alpha and play through a lot of the game on PC, and it does look pretty good, and it seems like it's a lot of fun. There's a ton of freedom. It's an open world chaotic action game. You're gonna be able to get a jetpack and just do all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, there's a good emphasis on stunts and racing through the New York streets. Now, no, this is not an accurate representation of New York by any means. As somebody uh, from New York, this is not it, dude. But it does look like a really fun playground for just free chaos. Now, it's probably gonna come with a lot of the mobile game style free to play trappings, of course, and it's put on PC. But hey, sometimes you can't beat just a quick and easy free open world game. I mean, look at this. Next over at number seven, we have Crows and it's spelled Crows with a Z. Yes, really. Uh, but what this is, is a competitive first person shooter set in a world destroyed by meteorites uh, where countries basically pay factions of mercenaries to fight over very specific sought after resources. It's team based in some pretty open environments with mission objectives and some customization and gameplay looks to be a little chaotic with vehicles and cool weapons and explosions and stuff, uh, but also a layer of some tactics, teamwork and accuracy, which we really like. It seems like it might have a smaller budget and, you know, at first glance, it might look like a knockoff PUBG. But if you just like this style of game and you're looking for a bit of a change up and see how somebody else handles the formula, maybe Crows will be a hit. It's, it's slated as coming soon. Next over at number six, we have Exomecha. As of right now, there's not a ton of info about it still, uh, but we have had a lot of gameplay trailers and it seems to have been making a buzz really just because of what it is and how it looks. It seems like a mashup of a bunch of games like Killzone, Halo, and Titanfall with almost like on the ground, boots on the ground combat with troops with sci-fi weaponry. While at the same time, the battlefield is also littered with giant, almost transformers and Power Rangers style mechs, some of them being dinosaurs. You're gonna be able to hijack or use vehicles. And while it might just be a fun competitive first person shooter, the actual style and the whole mech thing just makes it that much more ambitious and helps it stand out. This is gonna be releasing on the Xbox platform and PC, and we're definitely gonna be jumping into this one because if it's even an inch like Titanfall, we're gonna give it a shot because we're still itching for Titanfall 3 and that seemingly isn't gonna happen anytime soon. So we'll take the next best mech thing.
Now over at number five, we have Kart Rider Drift. The Kart Rider franchise, believe it or not, is actually pretty underrated. It's flown under the radar for quite a while just because of how Mario Kart dominates everything. But the Kart Rider franchise has had a lot of success in Korea. People go absolutely nuts for it. And with Kart Rider Drift, you're getting it on PC and consoles, and you're gonna have cartoonish fun racing in wild, wacky maps that actually require some precision driving and drifting, some pretty addictive mechanics. There's also gonna be power ups in the field to engage with, and of course, characters and carts are gonna be customizable. So that's probably where you're gonna end up seeing the free-to-play elements that are a little less desirable, but still, if that core gameplay is sweet, we're in. Next over at number four, we have Multiverses. Now, there are a few platform fighters that are popular today, like say, free-to-play Brawlhalla. People are still loving that and playing that and the developers are still supporting it, but another game that is coming into the competition is Multiverses. This is very much like a Super Smash Brothers type of thing, but the setting and characters are just a mix of famous franchises from Warner Brothers history. Think Batman, Shaggy and Scooby-Doo, Superman, Bugs Bunny, stuff like that. Every character, of course, is gonna have their own unique moves uh, with their own levels and some cool unique item drops and of course it's gonna have some free-to-play stuff we're really hoping that that core gameplay is solid enough to really warrant playing on the one hand with it being free to play it is pretty nice to hop in and try it you're gonna be able to get your friends in on it to just hop in and play a match I mean who doesn't want to play as Shaggy from Scooby-Doo and punch Batman in the face I don't know that sounds kind of appealing especially if it's free Next over at number three, we have Overprime. Now, if you enjoy MOBA games, Overprime seems like it's worth keeping tabs on. It's a third person shooter where players go through a 5v5 action combat all out battle. Players are gonna assemble like a team of specific heroes to kind of try to destroy each other's bases. And of course, the game is gonna have the usual tropes from typical MOBA style games. But again, it's more of a third person shooter action oriented one, which we've seen before applied to the MOBA framework, but only a few have had real true success. So we're looking forward to seeing if Overprime can finally really figure it out. There are a bunch of different heroes you're going to be able to choose from, and they seem like they have a pretty big variety to them, of course, uh, they're all going to have their own special abilities and make things more tactical. It's also going to have a full dedicated training mode where you can experiment and test out all the characters in the different maps, which is crucial because MOBAs definitely have a learning curve sometimes. And the developers promise that this game will be constantly updated with new heroes in the future. Constantly is their phrase, not mine. That's pretty ambitious to be consistently adding intense heroes like that in a game like this that requires a lot of balance. We're excited to see if it goes goes down that way. Now down to number two, Arc Raiders. It's a third person shooter set in an alternate future where a mechanical force puts humanity under constant attack. It sounds super generic on paper, yes, uh, but we were absolutely blown away by the first reveal trailer. It looks cool and creative, even if the actual gameplay genre it falls into is pretty commonplace. Now, from what we've seen so far, the game is centered around a resistance group fending off these attacks, and then you have to scavenge items to help further progress. Really what piqued our interest, to be frank, was the look of the characters, some of the gameplay style, and the world design. The world looks pretty damn incredible, even if it's not the main focus. Of course, the main focus is gonna be like the cooperative teamwork action. And to be completely honest, there are quite a few of these types of co-op shooters out there. But just judging from the early things we've seen so far, Arc Raiders is already looking pretty quality. It's from Embark Studios. It's a newer studio, a smaller studio made up of a bunch of industry veterans. So hopefully they know what they're doing and they put their chops to the test with this new game. Because when this style of game is good, it's really good. And if a community embraces it, it can end up getting even better over time. As of right now, we don't have a firm release date, but we do know it's coming this year for PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S. Now down to number one, we have Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt. This is yet another Vampire the Masquerade game, uh, which has kind of been having a bit of a resurgence in popularity lately with titles, uh, but most specifically the upcoming Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, a main game, which we're really looking forward to. But in the meantime, hopefully this thing can keep us busy. It's a free to play battle royale style game set in this universe. Combat's pretty chaotic. The maps have a lot of verticality to them and it's just got some good old vampire 
horror action gore. It did have an early access period last year, but the full launch is coming spring 2022, and we're definitely gonna jump in on either PC or PS5. And before we wrap up, we got a couple of bonus games to throw in too. SCP Nine-Tailed Fox is a free-to-play survival horror game and Undecember, a cooperative hack and slash action game with some good old fashioned RPG elements. Those are some free to play games worth keeping an eye on in 2022. Of course, there's usually a few surprises throughout the year, so we'll keep you updated on those. But hey, if you learned about a new game, maybe something that piqued your interest, all you gotta do is click the like button. It really helps us out, thank you. But if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.